What is Qigong? The word Qi in Chinese has a characteristic of air rising up and originally is probably from fermentation of rice grain fermenting and the air and the gases escaping. It has the translation can be mean breath or energy. And while the gong here means practice, cultivation, then qigong can be viewed as using energy to heal and for heaven. So many of my students have asked me, especially beginners, what is Qigong? And I will tell them often that imagine Qigong is like cooking a pot of soup. And in this pot of soup, you put in movement, very gentle movements, and then in this pot of soup, you put mindfulness and awareness and then finally a very gentle and form of deep extended breath and together it's cooked within the part of TCM a part of that's based on the traditional Chinese medicine theory of health and energy and together in this part of TCM then the movement the mindfulness and the breath control will start to make sense and together it works on basically working with the Chinese medicines energy meridian system as you can see this person there, the energy is flowing so free. And that within our internal channels, what we call meridian, flow the qi energy. But if those energy are blocked, sickness occur. Blocked sickness then is considered as the blockage of the flow of energy and that is a unified theory of health and sickness very simple if you're sick somewhere some area of the body or organ function is blocked and therefore health is simply unblocking the stagnation by the practice of Qigong in our particular case. Of course, you can say that one can use the other form, such as acupuncture, herbal medicine, but they all basically work with unblocking the stagnation by the other use. That's why Qigong has to be done in the framework of traditional Chinese medicine principle of healing. One of an example of a Qigong movement called holding up the sky involves the practitioner Qigong to slowly raise the arm up and put on the head. It is a very nice spinal stretch, but the main point is not only stretching the skeletal muscular system, but for the qigong is, is really to get the qi flow going up, going up all the way to the head. And this line here is a meridian called the Conception. Meridian. 
And that is especially important for women and female reproductive. functions. So as you can see that <coughs> the Qigong movement not only works with the physical body of stretching the spine, but it's really moving the qi through the meridian so it could break any blockage. So holding up the sky is very good for, therefore, female reproductive and cramps to reduce the pain in cramps and also for fertility. And traditional is done as a way to increase our immune system as well. Let's use another example. For example, in this one called touching the earth and again it's a very nice stretch of the hamstring as well as the lower back and the hand is touching the earth but the essence of this qigong touching the earth is actually truly stretching the governing vessel and there's a vessel that goes all the way from the tailbone all the way through to the top of the crown and this is called the governing meridian and its function is actually for the nervous system central nervous system and therefore for that particular, it's very useful to deal with headaches, especially that come from uh, tension in the back of the head, and any spinal ailment. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Qigong. As I believe, as a Qigong teacher, teaching my student, what is Qigong? It's very important to know what is Qigong, having a historical perspective. The modern history of Qigong really started in 1950 in China. There is a doctor, his name is Dr. Lao Guizhen. Dr. Lao who coined the word Qigong and opened the first Qigong clinic in China to basically work with one symptom. Also, stomach also. And he find that by having patients with very difficult cases of ulcer to go to his Qigong clinic for a stay of one month to three months by practicing, practicing a form of stillness Qigong meditation where they practice a certain kind of breathing regimen and breathing control and also a meditation that is special that there was incredible healing occur so then that becomes later becomes the contemporary and it grow to modern day called medical qigong. Now if you jump back to twelve hundred AD during the Song Dynasty There's not much mention of Qigong. Rather, it is called Nidan Inner Alchemy. And Nidan is basically what we practice as Qigong, but 
their attitude there is rather not for health per se. And health is important, but their frame of reference or their purpose is to actually achieve a physical immortality. In other words, the individual through the transformation of Qigong or inner alchemy, it retain a everlasting life like gold. It doesn't mutate, does not get deformed, it does not get rust and it can stay forever. And that's the whole premises of alchemy. Let's go back a little further to 200 BC, almost 3,000 years. And there, there was no inner alchemy, it was just alchemy, which is considered a kind of material immortality, which is that they believe that if you could ingest a special pill called elixir, That will transmute you, transform you into an immortality. One of the examples of that is, of course, the first emperor. Emperor uh, The Emperor Sen 2000 virgins with a Taoist master to seek the elixir of immortality in a strange island off the coast of China. Now, of course, this 2,000 virgin of boys and girls and the Taoist master went to, in some legend, I said, Japan. And then they stayed there. And that is how the earliest Japanese culture began. And therefore, the, some, for some Japanese um, legend has it their emperor, the Japanese emperor, come from heaven. So they call him Tian Wang, heavenly emperor. And perhaps the first emperor was the Taoist. And that is a myth, as a legend, and as interesting as a way to show that that the alchemy at that time was a material kind of immortality, believing in a magic bullet, a magic pill of elixir that can transform you. And the first emperor who built the Great Wall of China, who conquered China, all the other nation, and built the Great Wall to protect. So he called himself the first emperor, but his dynasty only lasted the second. He only lived to 56 years old, and he died. Now, if we trace further back and we say, where does the movement of Qigong come from? Then we have to go much, much further back to 30,000 years ago, during the Neolithic time, where the cavemen, the early human homo sapiens, were imitating animal, totemic dance of a bear, which they cohabited probably from the cave, cave bear, and crane, and of course the tiger. And at that time, Pora will be saber to tiger. And gradually, out of this animal totemic dance, gradually evolved into Qigong.
So you can see the practice of Qigong dated way back to the beginning of human civilization. And I feel very privileged to able to transmit such ancient, ancient practice.